Welcome back to the channel and a new video. I'm starting this video and it may end up leading nowhere, but I need to start recording these videos. Otherwise, there's no start to them. So a little 2016 it's Vauxhall Corsa SRI and looks beautiful. Bit of interference there from the LEDs. Now I've just been and bought this one from the owner's son. He has not long had this car, put it into a garage, spent a lot of money having a clutch done on it. And to say that they haven't solved the problem would be a bit of an understatement. There is still some issues with this car. As you can see, it is in lovely condition. And when we get inside in a minute, you'll see exactly why. I have pulled away from the person's house. I didn't want to film outside their house. So, 31,934 miles. Two keys, all the paperwork. Like I said, SRI model. I don't know if you're going to hear it, but as soon as you put your foot on the clutch, let me do the window up. It may be a case of when I get back to the yard. Let's have a little listen. Let's bring the revs up. You can actually hear on, on camera there is a little bit of a difference there. But genuinely, I think either the thrust race has not been changed because it's only when you dip the clutch or the spigot shaft has actually got issues on it. it will, well, this is one of our little cars that we'd just buy in and normally flip out the door without anyone seeing, but there's a good chance this one's gonna end up on the ramp with the gearbox out. So let's get it back to the yard, let Chris have a listen and see what he thinks. So absolutely, we're gonna check it out using car vertical. And with this particular car, I know it's not that new and it's not a mega high value item, this car is still very financeable at 2016 with that low mileage. So I just want to check that there is no outstanding finance on this vehicle. It's so easy to get caught out. And of course, with Car Vertical, it checks the theft, it checks the mileage, it checks the financial status, it checks whether it's categorised and been a damaged vehicle. And as you can see there on this particular car, it is all green. So we've got the green traffic light and I think we are good to go with it. What this would look like if there was an issue with like the finance in particular, it would look like this recent full transit. You all know that we bought this, so diesel 2018, and it was highlighted that it was still, that the finance company still had an interest in this vehicle. Now, quite often, even if they do and they forgot to take them off, you can go to the financial restrictions on the vehicle, actually click on it, go down to it, and it says there, just in particular, this one, operating lease, and you can click more details, and it actually comes up there with the name of the bank, the reference number at the top there, and of course, all important telephone number, just so that you can check whether they do still hold an interest in the vehicle. I want to thank Car Vertical once again for the continued support on the channel. To benefit from a nice little discount off your check, use the code up on screen now, or there's a link in the description. Tidy looking little car, Rob. Very, very tidy. And you're probably wondering why I'm filming with something like this. And it is actually, it's got a bit of a problem with it. Obviously the guy did mention there was a problem, but I think well, it is, it I've driven it home. It drives perfect, Chris, honestly. But I'll show you what's wrong with it in a minute. Look how tidy it is. Couple yeah. of little scuffed wheels. Yeah. Yeah, and nice miles, that Rob. Little bit of a lacquer peel there on yeah. the bumper, yeah. bit of paint missing. Yeah. But are you ready for it? You will probably be better off holding that camera. All right. Do you know, I tried demonstrating this just down the road, but if you just concentrate about here. All right, you ready? Yep. That's with a clutch down. Oh, that's a bit naughty, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of a juddery. Uh... I don't know if the mic could pick that up, Rob. That's down. Yep. That's up. So up with a little yep. rev, look. Nothing, nothing unordinary at all. But as soon as you put the clutch down, you put it in gear, lift the clutch, it goes back to normal, again goes quiet. Right. So bit, definitely a bit that of a weird travels, one. travels though, doesn't it? This is the thing, he's actually given up driving. I bought this off of his son-in-law. 
and he has not long just had it out of a garage with a dual mass flywheel yep. and a new clutch in it. Which really? is, and the garage have given it back to him. Like that? Like that. But do you remember the, I can't remember what it was, you actually welded it up temporarily on the spigot. No, that was on the snout that the thrust bearing effectively yeah. slides up and down on. It had worn to one side. Yeah. So yeah, it could be. If they have genuinely, but obviously we'll have to, what's what going to have to come out. What happens to them dual masses when they start wearing it out? They yeah. start doing that. Yeah. They cause all sorts of damage. Yeah, so if this that snout was, was worn on one side like it did, that was on a, it would, that was on one of these type fans, Rob, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, so the snout wore to one side, yeah, and so it throws the thrust bearing to the to one side. But Do you want to have a listen? We're probably better off bending down under the gearbox end. You just go down there with your or mic. With my mic, yeah. yeah. Go on. Right, that's off, yeah? Yep. On. Yeah, it's definitely coming from the bell housing. Well, we whip, whip the gearbox out. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I did want to say, just quickly. Like, I know it's probably irrelevant, but this is what I'll do when you're in the workshop. I'm out buying stuff like this all the time. That's right. And yeah. spinning it round. So this yeah, yeah. is really what, what I'll do. Yeah, we don't get normally up. make videos of the quick flip. No, we really. don't. Unless, but unless there's something interesting. Yeah. But all the uh, the sort of... And let's be honest, a lot of them are trade to trade. Yeah, they are, yeah. Or like this, you'll get, it's got a problem. And it's I could a trade this now fix. as it is, but this is nice, it's lovely mileage. Let's find out the problem and let's offer it to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Give everyone right. a chance to buy it. Let's yeah. get it on that ramp and do some work to it. Okay, get that mate. gearbox stripped out. Yeah. The other thing on, I don't know, we, have we ever done one of these? Never. I don't think, I don't think, think we've ever done a Corsa. See, Vauxhall's always used to have a spigot bearing yeah. in the end of the crankshaft. Yeah, so it could be but, that. But from memory, Rob, <coughs> they're noisy all the time when they, they go. But if something's a bit off centre there, or I don't know, we'll have to pull it apart. You're talking soon, old school, aren't, we? aren't you? Oh, I'm Do talking, you remember the old school I'm Vauxhalls? Talking, I'm talking rear wheel drive, <coughs> Coltons and things like that, mate. Mechanics <laughs> wouldn't, no, like modern mechanics now, wouldn't know about the old three pin one pull on a Vauxhall clutch. Do you oh, remember the, the slider, mate? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, bolt. Still got the kit. The there, bolt mate. on the end, the three yeah. little taps, and the clutch would fall on yeah. the floor. Brilliant, brilliant yeah. idea. Oh, that's right. Let's get it on the ramp. No time for any messing about. So straight in the workshop, bonnet open, up on the ramp, crack those front locking nuts off, get all the wheels removed, and start undoing everything on top there. So battery, battery box, air box, everything that's got to be removed out of the way on top. Bell housing bolts, all of them are coming out. We're going straight in with gearbox removal. So very, very busy, Chris, there in the background, but we, I do just want to show you how he's getting on. But just before we do, I take it for granted all of the time now, and I say it to you all the time, Chris, little things where we've been going quite a while, I do take for granted. And that is a lot of people still ask, when you buy a salvage car, they don't come with a logbook, how do you get one? Yep. So you can download this form, online it is called a v62 and you can see there you put in the reg make model chassis number uh, pc or plg whatever it is put your chassis number in there name address you don't have to put your date of birth but you can put your telephone number in there and down the bottom it says i enclose a fee of 25 pounds so if it's cat n you have to pay and of course if it's not it does say down the bottom there I do not enclose the fee, and that is because this vehicle is a Cat C or a Cat S. So I do hope that helps. V62. There's nothing in this section to do. It's just the car details and your details down here. And the reason I've got them out is because I'm just applying for four logbooks and going to tax something. So, mate, you have noticed quite a few little bits. Fill us in. Uh, yeah, it's all been apart. It's, it appears to have had... A drive shaft at some point there, Rob, doesn't it? Right. Because it's got a GK and sticker on it. Let's get in there a little bit, yep. So I think it probably has had uh, a new drive shaft at some point, but not recently. Um, yeah, all been out before, as we know. Subframe does have to come off by the look of it. To get it out. Uh, pity. Um, oil little, leak? Little bit of an oil leak from the drive shaft seal on the back there does oh, yeah, happen yeah. when you put them back together if you're not very very careful you can and pinch sometimes it. sometimes it's just where it comes apart and it, it doesn't so chris it i is, did it 
it is good practice just to replace the seals mm -hmm. it, when you've got it got it out. But so we will be replacing that because it has got a small, and that will only get worse, won't it? Not yes. better. I caught it on the recovery truck, didn't I? Uh, you did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but everything, yeah, everything's been apart. Oh, so. you've got all the. You've yeah. actually got. I've I've only been over there filling in them forms. You've actually got the engine. Yes. Yeah, so hanging it, on its mounts. Engine mounts out. Um, I'm just in the process of disconnecting the steer, side, steering rack from the bed um, because it's only two bolts and then we leave the rack and we've track what ends of course yeah. um, and we leave the rack behind um, sort of what we normally do rather yeah. than mess about with disconnecting it from the column leave it hanging so, yeah so um, yeah I think you're getting there with um, it mate top, top side bell housing bolts are out Everything. Battery tray, we did yeah, all that in that bit yeah, of time. Yeah, everything's yeah. out up there, unclipped. I've done the gear, gear selector cables, the uh, slave cylinder pipes clamped off, removed. So it's only the engine or gearbox mount holding the top of the gearbox. Right. Um, there was, appears to be a bolt in the starter motor coming from the opposite direction, so I've got to get up there in a minute and do that. But yeah, yeah that, all, um, all pretty straightforward, really. That engine bed, Cradle, what what would you yeah, like to call suspension it? Suspension subframe. So, uh, subframe, Chris. Is that going to move back, or if you've got to have that front bumper off to remove, because that's tight there. You said it was tight. Yeah, I mean. Are you going to get away well, with? Well, the, the engine and gearbox as a combined unit has got to be lowered enough for the gearbox to be separated. Yeah. Now, when you put your fingers there, that's about all you've got. Tight. So it's got to come, it's got to hang on the, we've got the engine beam there behind you. We have. So it's got to go on that and, and that's all, and uh, mounting removed and that's got to lower, so that's going to hit there. So obviously you can see all this has been off because they've had it off. But yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately all that's got to come out, so that as well to, um, um, but it is what it is, Rob. Yeah, I don't think that's going to come off until the front bumper's removed, mm. is it? By the well, oh, actually, I think you only take these probably out. Yeah, and it and slides leave, out. Yeah, it slides out. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know. Well, I'm going to whip up to the post office, mate, and tax this yeah. disco for you. Brilliant. And um, yeah. I'll let you carry on. I'll be back shortly. So continuing on under here, lots and lots and lots of bolts to undo, especially with the subframe coming out. So you've got loads, literally so much to undo moving on to the driver's side you've got your lower arm your drive shaft your drop link all steering rack everything's got to be disconnected in order to lower down that subframe of course because it's all connected to it and two right on top of the steering rack two large bolts holding it on there and you'll see there's shims on there that fall out shortly so that's all four of those v62s sent off recorded delivery in one envelope with no payment included. There's no fee for Category S cars. And that is the Discovery Sport, uh, sorry, the Discovery 5, that's taxed. And even though it's Category S and I've taxed it at the post office using a V62, I also had to pay 25 pound fee for the V5, but that will come in a refund from the DVLA as soon as that car's registered in the name I've just put it in. So our name. Soon as we get that, about a week later, you'll get a refund for your V5. Also, people always say, can you speed up the process? There's no speeding it up, unless your wife works at the DVLA. I'm sure she can help you out. Let's get back to the yard, see how Chris is getting on. Do this little bit live. I'm back from the post office, obviously, and Chris has got to this stage where he didn't want to try and do it on his own, no. even though Dan's here. But um, you're at... Right. What, do, what do you want to do? Oh, Sorry, I think you... I've got to let it... Either let that down a little bit more, take the car up a little tiny bit more, and then slide the subframe backwards slightly. Right. And then, once it's clear of these extensions, lower it a bit and bring it forward off of the exhaust. Right, because okay. I've, I've took all the hangers off, and there's loads of flex in that. Um, but so all we've got to get it over is that lander? Yeah, just that, and it's right, all okay. unplugged. Let's so, do it then, mate, shall we? Yeah, we'll stay rolling. What do you want to come I mean, the other thing, here, if, if it doesn't work, we might have to get Dan cut, get Dan here, just to oh, Dan. Dan handle the exhaust. Are you going to use the ramp, or do you want to use this um, first? Well, how are you on height? What's comfortable for you? I'm, I'm all right here. Shall we go for it where it is, then? Right, you ready? Yep. Right, we should be able to go back now, shouldn't we, Rob? Yeah. How are you on your um, drop link? 
Is it mine? Yeah, I'm yeah. out. Yeah, so I've got... Can it come to you a little bit? It can do, yeah. Oi, yeah, lovely. So down a little bit more? Well, probably not, because these would hit, wouldn't they? Uh, um, yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, but we just got that exhaust, haven't we? So. Should we handball it off? If we come down to the base as far yeah, as we yeah, can, yeah, and then handball it, it, yeah? yeah. Saying, saying that, those exhaust rubbers, they're off, are they? Yep, yep. Right, so. That's it. Well, that one's too Where do you want to go, mate? Anywhere you like. That weren't too sad, was that it? That weren't too sad. No, it's not that heavy, though, is it? They obviously got shims on them. They got shims on them. I've dropped one down here. I heard mm. it go. Let's put that where it needs to be. You know, there's still bits of that, even though we've swept, I've swept up, I know you have as well, there's still bits of glass from yeah, that yeah. i3. Right. And you've got one bolt left in the bell housing. So should we cut there or do you want to well, just leave it? And we've got to take the weight and then we've got to get the top mount off. Because right, it's okay. hanging on that at the moment. Yeah. So probably, uh, yeah. Well, probably, yeah, we'll cut there for a minute. Cut it, get well. up the ladder. Yeah. Just going to zoom out a little bit there, Chris, so everyone can see what's going on. Do you want to get a tie for that? Or you're Do you reckon right? that would stay there? Well, I think it might. It mm, might be better to tie. Have a look. Move your hand. Yeah, tie it to that. Cable tie, yeah? Yeah, I think that'd be safer, wouldn't it? Are we so that's filming? A, yeah, oh, so right. that's a cable tie around the drive shaft and then around the pump stand that's just it. to keep it there. Mind you, I don't know if that's going to work, that one. Um, well, Let's other, go this side. It's all right. Yeah. It's going to go that side because Lucky you've got that. Short, Rob. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. That was horrible, wasn't it? Oh, horrible little man. Horrible little man. That ain't going to hold. Um, That'll be all right, Chris, I think. It? Yeah. Right, let's just come down a bit. What we need is enough room there to pull, the, pull it free, don't we? Yeah. If we but I've, I think. Do you reckon that's enough? You can go a little tiny bit more if you want. Yeah, even maybe a little tiny bit more. Yeah, that's fine. Try it now. Yeah, that's plenty of room. All right, let's get that. Yeah, it's got us. Hopefully, I haven't missed any wall. Oh, well, it's moving. Right. You all right with that? Or do you yeah, know? I'll just get you to jump on it with me once it's once I get it off. Right, if that makes out. sense. Ready? Yeah. Lever. No, there she is. It's off, mate. Is it? Yeah. Got that side? Yep. Got it? Yep. You all right? Yeah. Straight down. I used to do them on my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they weren't lying. It is all new. Is it? Yeah. That's all new, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Is it? That looks new to me, Chris. It's got L-U-K on it, but I'm looking at that cover. I mean... There's a lot of dust in there, though, mm. unless they haven't cleaned it. No. no, that ain't that. Yeah, look. It's falling no, apart. No, it's falling apart. Poor, poor guy's been ripped off, mate. Been told he's had a new flywheel. That ain't a new flywheel. I'll tell you is what, it? it's had a new plate. I think it might have had a new plate. Do you know what? We're going to have to How long ago it. was it? Do you know? It's very recent, Chris, I yeah, believe. No, I think that. I'm just checking all the bolts are in there. But that shouldn't have float in it. To that degree, no. Like that. No. And that, yeah, that's not new, is it? That's not a new cover. It don't look new, does it? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to leave it there, and me and Chris are going to have an in-depth look. Otherwise, we're all going to be standing there staring yeah, at it. Yeah, so yeah. me and Chris will have a good in-depth look at that gearbox and have a good look at the clutch as well. But, yeah, let's see how we get on. Let's have so, a look. So it actually turns out we got tucked. Looks that way, mate, doesn't it? It does. But 
So I actually just popped out. We stripped everything. And we've not even shown any of that, Chris, by the way. No, we yeah. was just trying to establish really where the noise was, was coming from. And we couldn't... We was like looking at it and thinking, well, why is it making that noise when the clutch pedal is pressed? But it doesn't make the noise. No. The rest of the so time, you doesn't have, it? Do you just, just to mm. go across it, it does look like that possibly is new. There's no wear on There's it. There's no is wear there? on it. The clutch is definitely brand new. Yeah. Let me just grab that. Now that we've undone it, you can see the part number's still very yeah. visible yeah. on there and it's it's just not worn. So somebody has put a new clutch in it. The dual mass flywheel, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not convinced that's been changed, but possibly it has, because it is meant to have a bit of a spring in its step and it hasn't really got any and there's quite a bit of play in there. Although when you look at the, the wear face, yeah. There's no sign of any wear on it, Rob, is there? Which No, there's not. Which would to be fair, it probably is then, Chris. There's not yeah. even any bluing, is there? That You know when a Burn. clutch goes yeah, no. and it start getting hot and No, slipping. I'll make you right there, so, yeah. But while you was out and didn't think much of it... No, you've just told me this, but yeah, go on. While you was out, I know it's up here. So Chris has noticed this. I'm going to let him explain. Yeah. This was before we'd even got the gearbox out. I noticed Let's this get new that camera right up there, mate. This sealant, new sealant yeah. gear, and then up, up on the sandwich. It. Yeah. Can I so, go up to that? Yeah. Look how thick it is up there. So, I saw that and I thought, oh well, maybe at the same time they've had the sump off, and maybe it's a wet belt. And they've said, oh well, why you got it apart? I've replaced the wet belt because you hear. Raw. I don't even know if it is a wet belt, but engines this age, some of them so have got that. Just pause there while I wipe this screen. So. Just leading on from what we were saying though, why is it when the clutch pedal? So when you press the clutch pedal, it operates that clutch slave cylinder yep. and pushes the thrust bearing out, doesn't it? it pushes yeah. that into, so I don't know if it's going to make a noise. The screwdriver. Angle. Did you see that, guys? Do that again, Chris. So we've got massive M float there yeah. in the crank. Yeah. And so that's what's making the noise when you push because the pressure is exerted against the end of the crankshaft or the flywheel, isn't it, that pushes the crank. Um, in normal running conditions, all the pressure's downward, isn't it, yeah. against the crank. So uh, that's where the noise is coming from. So nothing to do with the gearbox, nothing to do with the clutch so or the flywheel. Non-technical terms, the engine is knackered, not the gearbox. Well, what it appears like, doesn't it, that they've had that apart, they've probably put new mains in it because one of those mains will likely have the thrust on it. To stop in the end flow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's normally how they are, isn't it? Um, and it hasn't cured it, has it? No. They've probably used it and it's knocked it, so it means that a bit of the crank has worn away, probably. Um, what's caused that? I don't know. Maybe it's a common thing with this engine. Maybe it's got oil pickup problem and it's starved. Yeah. that main which it, it generally does starve the mains so it is such a shame and i mean that this is this is not gone chris sorry mate sorry it's not something you could have established on someone's drive no absolutely not but obviously clearly they were aware yeah because that's all been apart and it's very 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 recently been apart fresh yeah 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 so uh, you've not been told the full story there, have you? Unfortunately not. I mean, so. do you know what? I, I say it in every single video, in every situation, and you'll, you'll be the first one to say it as well. Stay positive. It's one of them, isn't it? It's, it is what well, it is. Well, you can't win them you, all. You could have a you paddy, cannot. but it won't fix the problem, it will it? It will not fix it. And <clears throat> do you know what? People love the positivity. It wasn't lots and lots of money. We, we uh, no, but... but we bought it with in mind that it was maybe a gearbox, yeah. not an engine. No, that's so right. So we're going to blow out of it. We are going <laughs> to blow out of it, because I just looked at how much the engines are. Yeah. But what we'll probably actually end up doing is letting Reclam out or someone like that have this well, I, I really guess look after us. So. You have made the call to Phoenix Engineering, haven't yeah. you? Because yeah, they've I always have. helped us out. Yeah. We're waiting for them to come back. But it looks like... They've tried to cure it. Yeah, it and they haven't. It. So yeah. the likelihood is it's toast, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, um, Such a shame on such low mileage. And it's a, it genuinely is a nice little car. But Lovely little car. It, it is a shame, but 
I mean, the, the price they're asking for an engine for it on eBay, I've just looked, is unbelievable, and it's just not worth doing. Yeah. So uh, Market Kent Auto Salvage hasn't got one. He hasn't got one, no. 1.2 um, he's got. It's a yeah. 1.4 turbo. And you've turbo. made a couple of other calls. Yeah, no one's got one. No so one's got one, so... I think it's... Yeah, I mean, there's... there's uh, well, we'll see what Adam says when he comes back. Yeah. So, unfortunately, uh, it's a bit of a little waiting game, isn't it? But, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking it's likely... Well, uh, we know... It's not any of That's this. the end of the road, isn't it? Yeah. We know it's not any of this. No, no. We can't have it on the ramp. All this has got to go back in it anyway yeah, right. to make it manoeuvrable yeah. again. So I guess I'll, I'll wait and speak to some people. Let's crack on and well, get all this put back together. Well, should we just wait and see if Adam rings us back? Yeah, can do. Just in case, because obviously we, we've pulled the engine. It's nearly out. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> drop it yeah. up to them. But we're just hang far. But I, I don't, I'm not very hopeful, are you? No, nah, not no. at all. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You cannot win them all. Just got off the phone to Adam at Phoenix, and unfortunately, that's not an engine that they regularly deal with. He did say that he could put us on to a Vauxhall Breakers that could possibly supply an engine, possibly even supply some parts for it. But for the moment, I think we'll just leave that open-ended and see what, you know, I did say to him, yeah, see, see what they'll charge for it, see if this is St. Common, see if they do an exchange unit and see what sort of money it is. But that is, I think, going to be the end of today's video. Unfortunately, I thought this was going to be a quick turnaround, a little bit of a noise. We'd do it all in one video. It'll be something very, very interesting and different. Take the gearbox out, doing a clutch, doing it all in a day. But it don't always work out the way you planned, did it? If you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate you hitting that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It's completely free of charge. And don't forget, you can follow us on Instagram at Selvage Rebuilds, and you can follow Chris on his jollies at Selvage Rebuilds Chris. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and share. And if you've got a car you want to sell us, and it's got an honest story, reach out to us, sales, S-I-U-K, at gmail.com. We'll see you all very, very soon in the next one.